Hello, hello. I have not made a video in quite a while, but I am making my first ever reading slash book video today, and I'm very, very excited about it. If you've watched any of my day in the life videos, I have kind of mentioned that I've been getting into reading this year, and I have really, really enjoyed it. So in 2023, I set a New Year's resolution for myself to read one book a month, which I have made in previous years and around like book three or four, I fell off that. So I actually did it this year and I exceeded my goal and fell in love with reading in the process. So today I'm gonna share with you the books that I read in 2023. <laughs> I've tried to do this I have started with like self-help books and tried to get into reading that way and I think that's kind of why I wouldn't stick with it because eventually I just kind of get bored because like those books are good and fun but like just reading them a lot it just kind of like bored me over time this is the year that I found fiction though and you can kind of see I'm gonna go down the list I have the list on my phone of like which ones I read and I'm gonna go in order so you can kind of see the progression the first book I read was a self-help book um, and it was how to have confidence and power in dealing with people by Les Giblin this was a really good book um it's more like business based um and he talks about basically how to go into a situation and like assert what you want while also like being considerate of what other people want and making sure that everyone wins in the situation it's a pretty short read um but it was a good one even if you're not like in business i thought it was good because i typically am one to just kind of like hold back and like keep my opinions to myself if I think that it's gonna mess with someone's plans or whatever. So it was a good one for me to just um, realize that I can at least express like what I want without offending people. So if you struggle with that, you should give this one a read. And the second book is when I fell in love with fiction. I read Where the Crawdads Sing. And I feel like I owe my year of reading to Delia Owens. Um, this book was so amazing. I know I'm probably late to the game on it. Um, it went crazy a couple years ago. But it really is so good. Like the storyline is beautiful. It has a dual timeline that you're like flashing back to her life and then going forward to like this um, courtroom case and you don't really know what is happening until like the very end which i loved i loved the like flashbacks and the dual timeline and the sense of mystery but then there was also romance and just the way she writes is just so beautiful the way she describes scenes and what um kaya the girl is like seeing and experiencing it was just so beautifully done and i really really enjoyed it if you haven't read this book yet you definitely definitely need to so after i read where the crawdads sing i knew i needed a good book to keep me going because i after i finished it i was like if reading can feel like that i could be a reader so i didn't want to lose that momentum so i started researching like historical fiction or like dual timeline type things and I found the things we leave unfinished and this story is so beautiful it's just such a great love story there's actually two love stories going on is where you get the dual timeline there because you're flashing back to this grandmother and like when she was young and her falling in love and it's set in World War II so you get some of that and then the granddaughter years later she's going through like her own love story so 
you get both of those and the writing of the stories is just beautiful it took me on a journey let me tell you i was like laughing at parts and absolutely sobbing at other parts i picked this up one day at like 8 a.m when i woke up and i mean that's just kind of the hold it had on me i was like i have to know what's happening i was at a crucial part and by like nine in the morning i'm sitting in my bed absolutely sobbing and i was like what is wrong with me what why am i doing this to myself but it was beautiful i do have to say with this one i did learn that with books that you just find on the internet and book talk and things like that a lot of times they're very spicy and you need to make sure that you say that you don't want spice when you are researching for books to read um i <laughs> did not really know that and this book was an eye-opener with that because there definitely was some things that I could have done without in there and really I feel like I would have enjoyed it 10 times more if it didn't have those things in there. But I did find a um, Instagram account. I think it's called the Real Life Book Reviewer. I'll have to find her handle and put it up on the screen so you can check it out because she reviewed this book and she has other books but she'll go over like which scenes to skip or chapters to skip pages if you don't want spice in your books but you want to like read the story so I would definitely recommend going to find her review of this one um, so that you can get the beautiful story for sure because it is it is a very good one let me check my list to see where I am number four oh number four I do not have with me but it is in five years by Rebecca Searle um, I don't think I have it with me because I think I might have taken it to a used bookstore because I did not care for this book at all. Um, it just, it was not, I didn't engage with the characters, like I didn't connect with them very well. And the whole premise is that there's like this flashback in the beginning of them in five years and then you go back to like, how do we get to this point? But then like when you got there, it turns out it was just like a completely random event pretty much. I don't know. I hope I'm not like spoiling anything for you by saying that. It was a very short read, so if you want to read it, it I mean it took me like not much time to read. But I did not care for it. The next book I read is Find Your People by Jenny Allen. I really appreciated this book. I didn't realize it was going to be so research based, which was super cool. Um, she goes into how um, ancient times, like they had to live more communally to survive and how we've gone away from that as a society and it's hurting us so greatly. And she calls it the epidemic of loneliness that we are experiencing. Um, and because we've like gone away from these communal activities and like taken things that used to be done as a group and now we just like do it by ourselves and she had just so many good examples of how to um, implement community into your life just like simple things she one i remember is that she was saying like doing laundry like, why not? Everyone has to do laundry. Like, why not bring your laundry over to someone else's house and, like, you guys do laundry together? Um, just, like, little things like that that I would never think of, but just ways that you can be with people and actually, like, have community that you're doing life with. So, I really enjoyed this book. If you are going through um, a season of loneliness, I would definitely recommend it. I've definitely been there. I feel like in 2023, I really found a lot of community and I think this book really helps to keep those ideas on top on the top of your mind so that you can be striving to live in community because it is an intentional thing that we have to be thinking about in order to fight that um, loneliness epidemic that she talks about. Book number six is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I really enjoyed this book. It was my first Christina Lauren read. Um, it was very fun. It definitely had some spice that I could do without. 
Um, but overall, it was a cute story. I really liked the characters. I remember at the end of it, I was like, I just miss them. Like, I want to read about their life, like, years after this. Um, they just were fun characters to read about. Essentially, it is about a girl whose twin sister is getting married, and the groom's brother, so, like, the sister and the brother, they do not get along. They're, like, enemies. It's an enemies to lovers trope. Um, but they just, like, annoy each other so much, and through a series of events, they are the only two at this wedding that don't end up with food poisoning. So, the sister who is getting married is, like, you have to go on my honeymoon. I got such a good deal and it's non-refundable. So they end up going on someone else's honeymoon and they have to pretend like they're the honeymooning couple um, to like any of the hotel staff that they run into. So it's kind of cute and fun that way. And then obviously by the end, they love each other. So <laughs> it was cute. Like I said, I enjoyed the characters for sure. Next up is Beach Read by Emily Henry. Um, I also really enjoyed this one. The characters I really liked, especially the guy main character in here. I thought he was very sweet. But this one's about two authors, which was interesting to read about authors in a book. Um, but they were enemies in college, like just very competitive in college with their writing. And now somehow they end up being like neighbors for a short time. And they're both writing books currently when they're meeting again. So it's really fun just to see like the backstory behind them and seeing like different circumstances that each one of them are going through. So as it was a romance book, but it also had some like deeper elements to it. It wasn't just about like the love story. It was a little bit about like personal development for both of them too. So I enjoyed that part of it. I will say with the um, title, Beach Read, I was like excited to read this on a summer trip. And it's not really like the beach as I would think of the beach as a North Carolinian. It was on Lake Michigan. So I was like, this is not really like the beachy read that I was thinking about. But it's still a really, really cute book. And I enjoyed it. It was my first Emily Henry book. Okay, book number eight was a very fun one. The Summer of Broken Rules. This one definitely had all the summer vibes. It was set in Martha's Vineyard, I believe. Um, but it is about a girl who just lost her sister and she's going on the family vacation like with her whole extended family. They meet at this one spot every year and this particular, particular year one of her cousins is getting married, so all of his family is there too. And the groom's stepbrother and the main character like hit it off and they're really cute. I really enjoyed the cute little like flirty romance of this. This one was my first uh, young adult novel and I really appreciate the young adult novel. I love the just like the cute flirty romance, you know, like I don't need spice. I just you know, give me a cute little text that he sends and like, I love it, you know? So this one, I forgot to say, it's by K.L. Walther. Um, Walther, did I say that right? Anyways, but I really enjoyed her writing. This book also had some good, like, more development than just a romance novel because she's dealing with like the death of her sister and she's processing her grief while also being with her family at this place that she always used to go with her sister. There was just a bunch of different little elements that I really enjoyed. And I think just the cover of this book is just beautiful. It just was a really fun read. Okay, so after Summer of Broken Rules, I read Something Wilder, which was another Christina Lauren book. And again, I don't have it because I took it to the used bookstore because I did not really like it. It was, um, it just felt like they couldn't commit to like it being a romance book or an adventure book, like a mystery thing. And so then like both sides of that just didn't get done like thoroughly enough. So I just like didn't connect with the characters whatsoever. 
um actually the main character i just i in my mind i read her as like this 80 year old grumpy woman like she just I just did not connect with her at all. So then like in the romance scenes, I just wasn't feeling anything. And then it turns into like this mystery book at the end. It's just, it was kind of weird. I didn't love it, but if you read it and love it, that's great, but was not for me. So the next book I read was Every Breath by Nic Nicholas Sparks. I enjoyed this one. Um, it wasn't my favorite but I read it because it centers around this mailbox called the kindred spirit and it actually exists in North Carolina on Sunset Beach which I go to a lot in the summers so I was like oh I want to actually like go there and check it out I might as well read the book so basically the mailbox people can write anonymous letters or just write anything that they want to and put it in the mailbox and then you can go by and read what other people have written and it's just kind of a cool thing um but nicholas sparks wrote this book about it and about like a romance blooming through this mailbox so anyways it was cute wasn't like super special to me but it was still still a good one next up is evie drake starts over this one was a very random find for me we were at the outer banks with my family and went to a random bookstore and i found it it's pretty short so i was like oh i'll pick that up for the week and i loved this book it's by linda holmes and i don't think i've ever seen any other books that she has written but it was so cute it's um a sports romance um it's about a woman who has recently lost her husband but when he unexpectedly died she was actually getting ready to leave him so she's like processing like grief but also like just like a weird um, weird mix of emotions there so while she's dealing with it her friend comes to her and he has a friend that is a baseball player who has recently got the yips which apparently is a real thing where like athletes will just like unexpectedly like lose their ability to do what they usually do. I never heard of it, but apparently it's a real thing and that is like what he's going through. She ends up renting out an apartment that's built onto her house to this guy who's like trying to figure out his next steps in his career and everything. And they just really connect. Um, together and like they're kind of the only two that they feel like they can open up to about what they're going through and it just results in like a really sweet romance for them and it's just a really really cute book i would highly recommend okay book number 12 my absolute favorite all year better than the movies by lynn painter i'm obsessed I'm obsessed. I read it twice this year. It is so good. It's so sweet. The way she writes like the banter in this book is just so good. Um, she is just, she's so good at writing like conversation. It just, it flows like an actual conversation that you would have in real life. It's just really, really well done. Um, it's about a, a two neighbors, their next door neighbors and they've always kind of like hated each other and like just been annoying to each other but as enemies to lovers tropes usually have the boy is actually like in love with her and just trying to give her a hard time because he just thinks it's fun to mess with her well over time they have to like fake date and then obviously they find out that they do have feelings for each other and there you go but it's just so well done and so good liz the main character is obsessed with romantic comedies so throughout the whole book there's like rom-com quotes and she's always watching the movies and it's just really a really cool element to the book and it turns out that she likes the movies because it's something that she used to always do with her mom was watch these movies and her mom has passed away. So she's like 
processing that and like her grief and it being her senior year and her mom's not here and then she is also doing this whole like fake dating thing with her enemy Wes and so it's just a good kind of like with Summer of Broken Rules there's like more going on behind the scenes than just like the romance and then it just makes for like really good character development within the romance story so I appreciate that. I absolutely loved this book. You need to read it if you haven't. Okay. Oh, also with Better Than The Movies, there's bonus content on Liz Painter's website. So I read all of that with that book as well. And then number 13, I read Maybe In Another Life by Taylor's Jenkin Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I didn't really care for this book. I think the writing was not my favorite. It's more of like a matter of fact, just like, then I did this and then I did this and then like, so that just wasn't like super engaging to me, but the premise was cool. It's about um, a girl who moves back to her hometown. She meets with her old boyfriend and it's like, okay, if I, go with him, here's what would happen with my life, and here, if I don't, here's how my life would go. So it's almost like a choose your own adventure kind of book, like she, that this main character is going through. Cause every scene, you're going back and forth between like, if she made one decision, here's how it would be, and if she made the other decision, here's how it would be. So that was kind of interesting, and I enjoyed the last two chapters to like see how both ends like tied up and they kind of became connected a little bit and I thought that that was cool but overall I didn't love the book but it was still still an interesting read for me a little bit different than my usual. So next I read the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. Um, I loved these movies. I love these movies. And so I was like, oh, now that I read, I should read the books. And I don't know if it's because it was a trilogy and I'm not like used to reading like a series, but the first two books were like so slow. I felt like it was just the same issue over and over for two books. And also Peter Kavinsky in the first two books is like a jerk the whole time. What's his name? Noah Centineo. He's like way too friendly and nice seeming in the first movie because that's like not how Peter Kavinsky is. And in the book, I was like, why does she like him? I just, I don't know. But then in the third book, the movie Peter comes out a little bit and this one was cuter. I liked it. There was more character development finally and I came around to liking his character more and so I I wouldn't like not recommend them but they just were a little bit slow. But the movies are definitely better. I'd probably just watch the movies and not read the books. But there you go. I can say I read them. Book number 17. If he had been with me, I still don't know how I feel about this book. If you've read it, you understand, but it is very different. It's, it's a love story, sort of. You go through from like freshman year all the way to senior year of high school with this girl and it's just kind of like her inner thoughts and she is like in love with her best friend who's also her neighbor and their moms are best friends and they just like grew up together and then something happens and they just end up like not talking to each other again and it takes like all of high school for them to like build their relationship again until they are back together and things are good and then like tragedy happens so I finished it and like I was just staring at the wall like what did I just read like what it was because it was like sad but at the same time I wanted there to be more backstory of them 
um it was a lot more of like her thoughts like present day than like learning their history and i think if i knew more of their history than like the parts that were supposed to like get me would have like really gotten me like i shed a tear but that was about it i enjoyed it i just wish that there was like more to really because it had the potential to like really get me and it just didn't quite land i do have to say there is a second book coming out with finney's point of view the guy's point of view and i think reading that will help the whole story kind of like hit me the way i wanted it to um so i'll be reading that i need to double check on when it comes out and also better than the movies it has another book coming out the second one of those nothing like the movies is what it's called and i believe it comes out september 1st so you know i'm gonna be reading that i'm really excited but if he had been with, with me, it was a very interesting read, and like I said, I liked it, but I wanted to like it more. So, anyways, my last book of the year was um, Forgotten God. This is by Francis Chan. This is a book about the Holy Spirit, and more specifically about our neglect of the Holy Spirit as a church. It's really crazy when you read the book of Acts in the Bible, um, how important the holy spirit is and how like present he is in everyday believers lives there's so many stories of them just like depending on the spirit and like the spirit showing up and like doing miracles and um it's something that we want here to experience i know like i want that in my life but sometimes it just feels like is that really possible here and now and like it is like the holy spirit still works in those same ways that he did in the bible and this book was a really good practical way to start thinking about how to like have the holy spirit in my life like that and to um engage with the holy spirit so if you don't know by the way like the holy spirit is basically um god voice inside of us is how I explained it to my son. Um, I don't know how theologically accurate that is, but basically there's the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So you have God, Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit, and they are all one God, um, just in different forms. So you have like Jesus who came down. He was God in human flesh that came to show us like what God was like and to pay the price for our sin. And then you have the Holy Spirit who like comes into a believer's heart when you accept Christ as your savior. And then he like leads and guides and it's like, you know, God's direction like that you have inside of you. So it is kind of, <laughs> it might sound like really strange, but if it sounds strange, you should read this book, Forgotten God, um, because it really is very eye-opening about like who the Holy Spirit is and what um, it's all about. Anyways, that was my last book of the year. So I read 18, I mean, looking at these like this, I feel very accomplished from it. Like I said, I've never been a reader before and I was planning to read, I wanted to read 12 books and I failed at that in years past and this year I read 18. So I'm very happy with that. My goal this year is 20 books. So stay tuned on if I make that goal or not. I have a very big TBR list right now. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope that maybe it inspired you. If you're not a reader like me, you can do it because I didn't think that I could become a reader and this year has taught me otherwise. So if you want that, you can do it. Find some good fiction books. And I hope that this video maybe gave you a couple ideas on other books that you could read. But anyways, thank you for watching. Bye!